we're going to click on the new lesson, the one that is due today, and it's called chromosomes and pedigrees. So chromosomes and pedigrees are topics that we have already covered, but we're just going to review them in this new lesson. Now, here's what we see in pedigree charts. Uh, we have two pedigrees in here. Uh, the first question is, which one you think is a recessive one? We're not going to do that one right now. This is for your lesson, but you should already know, uh, have some clues about how can we tell uh, if a pedigree is recessive or dominant. And I'm actually, if you have an answer to that question, just write answer so we can hear out from you. So here's my question. How do we know if a pedigree is dominant or recessive? Um, and that question, let me, since Tyler was the last person yesterday uh, here that spoke, uh, Tyler, can you unmute yourself? Can you tell us how do you know if a pedigree is recessive or dominant? How, we, how do we know if we're talking about a dominant characteristic or a recessive characteristic? Uh, we know whether it's dominant or recessive because if it's recessive, then it most likely skips a characteristic. Okay, perfect. So let me give an example. So this big pedigree chart, it might be a little intimidating for some. What do you think about this pedigree chart just from what you told me? Uh, I think it is recessive because if you look, it disappears in a lot of the offspring and it's mm -hmm. only seen in some combination of offspring and mate. Yep, that's perfect. So you're going to see in here uh, that the grandparents, they don't have the characteristic. Let's say we're talking about freckles again, all right? So we're seeing people in our family with freckles. And we see that kids have freckles, but their parents don't have necessarily that phenotype. They don't have freckles. So that's a big clue about... That's a pre-owned. Please it. mute yourself. Which means it already developed drift and that's why they sent it back. Are if, they joy -Con? No, don't give me joy -Cons. Let me give me a second. Go, um, look up. All right. So let me just show you. So right in here, if you see their grandparents don't have the characteristic and the kids, some of the kids do. In this case, one of her, their three kids have the characteristic. So they have two girls and one boy. And only the boy got the characteristic. That means that this characteristic is recessive. Same in here. You're going to see in here that both parents didn't have the characteristic, but the boy also had the characteristic. That means that this phenotype, this pedigree three is probably recessive. And also it means that the parents are probably heterozygous. All right. Uh, let me put the chat back again. Give me one second. I want to see the chat. All right. All right, guys. So here's what we're going to do right now. So after you go into the lesson and you talk a little bit about dominant characteristic and recessive characteristics, you're going to see that we're going to talk about chromosomes again. We covered chromosomes a couple of weeks back and chromosomes are just how we have our DNA organized. So just in the same way we were seeing that our inbox is organized in little folders, our DNA is organized in chromosomes. You're going to see in here that we have the karyotype and karyotype is just the word for um, like a chrom your chromosomes, so your chromosomes image. A lot of doctors uh, take a picture of your chromosomes and that's what a karyotype means. So this is the chromosomes of the mother and these are the chromosomes of the father. And the daughter you see in here is gonna have one, so let's see chromosome pair number one. Chromosome pair number one, you're gonna have one chromosome from dad and one chromosome from mom. Chromosome number two, chromosome pair number two, you're gonna have one chromosome from mom, one chromosome from dad. And this is going to repeat for every single chromosome. You get one of the pairs from your dad, one of the pairs from your mom. That's the reason we have one allele from mom and one allele from dad. So we were saying that you always get 50% from your dad, 50% from your mom, one allele from dad, one allele from mom. This is the reason why. When your parents uh, make you, you get one chromosome from each. So chromosome number one, you're going to get from mom and from dad. And that's going to repeat for all 23 chromosomes, all right? Remember, you have 23 pairs, and that's a total of 46 chromosomes, all right? Uh, now, let's keep going. All right, so we know a lot about chromosomes now. We know that's how our alleles, our DNA, are organized in little bundles. And we are going to see in here that 
we're going to ask this question. Are all chromosomes the same? So just from looking at it, a lot of some chromosomes are bigger than the other. Some chromosomes have different shapes. Uh, but I, what I want you to notice in here is that the first 23 chromosomes are usually grouped together. But when you get to chromosome number 23, you usually have different variation. You usually have either this type or this type. And you're going to see that in every image that we look. Every karyotype, every uh, set of chromosomes that you look at it on the internet or in your books or in your lessons, you're going to see that the first, 23, the first 22, they usually group them together. But when you get to the last one, it's like the, the last ugly duck, right? They usually just put it separate. They put it aside like it's different. So the first 22, they usually uh, put them together. You're going to see that in some images, like in this one, first 22, they group them together. And the last chromosomes, they put it like either this or this. You're going to see that. Let me just give you some, show some examples. Same in here. First 22, they group them together. And the last chromosomes, they usually put it either this or this. And the last one I'm going to show you is this one. Same thing. First 22 chromosomes, they put them like this. And the last one, they put it aside. They either change the name or they put different options for that. And this is the reason why. The first 22 chromosomes are called autosomal chromosomes. All right, this is a big word. We're going to get used to it, but it's called autosomal chromosomes. They also sometimes are called autosomes, uh, just like automobiles, I guess. But they are called, when we hear the word autosomal, we need to think about the first 22 chromosomes. And here's what's special about the 20, first 22 chromosomes. The first 22 chromosomes include all the dominant and recessive characteristics we have talked about. So if we were to ask, where can I find uh, the detached earlobe, attached earlobe alleles? Where can I find the blonde uh, hair, the uh, blue eyes? Whatever characteristic that is dominant or recessive we're talking about, we're going to point out to any of these chromosome pairs. Let's say the attached earlobe is found in chromosome number 10. Chromosome number 10. That's where we're looking at it. So dominant or recessive, we're going to look at autosomal chromosomes. Okay, So autosomes include all the dominant and recessive characteristics that we talk about. Now let's go to the last one. Let's, let's leave the best for last. So the last chromosome that we usually see here at the end of every karyotype, it's called sex chromosome. And this is why it's called sex chromosome. It's because that chromosome is different between boys and girls. So you can see in here that girls usually have a perfect twin of that chromosome, which is called XX. So if you're a girl, if you're a woman, you have a chrom uh, your chromosome number 23, your chromosome pair number 23 is XX, and they usually look the same. If you're a boy, if you're a man, you have what it's called an XY chromosome pair. So you're going to see that one chromosome is a little sm smaller, and one chromosome is just like the ones found in girls. So the difference between boys and girls when we look at chromosomes is that boys, instead of having a second X chromosome, they have a little Y chromosome. And you're going to see that in every image that you look. In this image, you're going to see that these two chromosomes are the same. So this is probably a girl because they have two X chromosomes. Uh, let's look at the second one. In this one, it gives us the option either girl or boy. Let's look at the next one. In this one, it gives us the option too, either girl or boy. The chromosome number 23. And in this one, it says XY. So if it's it says XY, what is this karyotype? Is this a boy or a girl? Boy. Correct, Shimmer. Yep, boy. Thank you, Beyond. Thank you, Tyler. So this is a boy just because it says X and Y. Yes, uh, Shimmer, you're like, you're right. It doesn't look like a Y. It they just call it Y chromosome. There is no reason about the shape. Like you can see here, um, Chromosomes don't really look like anything. They just look like bundles of DNA, but they call it Y just to uh, differentiate it from the X chromosome. All right. So remember, first 22 chromosomes are called autosomal chromosomes. You can see that either like these sticks. Sometimes you can see it like little X's. But what are you talking about? First 22 chromosomes are called autosomal chromosomes, and they contain all, all your dominant and recessive characteristic. Chromosome number 23 has your uh, gender. So whatever you find in chromosome number 23, if both chromosomes are the same, that means that you're a girl. There are two X chromosomes. If you're a man, 
only one chromosome is X and one chromosome is Y. Now, let me ask you a question. So, in boys, we have one Y chromosome, but we also know that we get one chromosome from one parent and one chromosome from one parent. Where do you think we got this Y chromosomes? So, for men in here, or and for women as well, if you want to answer, where do you think boys get their Y chromosomes, from mom or dad? Yep, 100% correct. All right, guys, so yes, Y chromosomes you always get from your uh, dad and the X chromosomes you would get from your mom. For females or for women, you would get one from your dad and one from your mom as well. It's just that they're the same chromosome. They're the same X and X chromosome. So this could be from your mom on that. This could be from your mom on that. You're always going to get one from one parent, one from another parent. But for boys, it's very peculiar because only the, the Y chromosome only comes from the uh, dad and the X chromosome only comes from the mom. All right, so that's something that is very special about chromosomes. That's all you need to know for this lesson. And we have eight minutes. The last thing we're going to do, let me see if we have questions in the chat. Let's see, since that only has it. Yep. Perfect, Ikra. So, yep, excellent. Um, doesn't mean that boys have less DNA than girls. Tyler, that's a really good question. Doesn't mean that boys have less chromosome, less DNA than girls, just because the the Y chromosome is a little smaller. Technically, yes, but that's the last time you're gonna hear me saying that because that's not the topic that we're covering. But yes, Tyler, technically you're right. Since it's smaller, that means that boys have a little less DNA. It doesn't really count. It's it's DNA is a very long molecule, so boys have almost the same amount of DNA is just a little less just because this Y chromosome is a little slower, is smaller, but it makes up for X chromosome. So remember, when you're looking at a characteristic or the phenotype of a person, you're only looking at one chromosome at a time. So if we're looking at eye color, right? Let's say this X chromosome is blue eyes and this chromosome is brown eyes. You can only see the allele in one parent in one chromosome. So if I'm looking at someone in here who has brown eyes, I'm only looking at one chromosome at a time. I'm only looking at one allele at a time. All right. So Tyler, we're not gonna go into that. But yes, just looking at it, you're technically correct. All right. Yes, man. Do yep. Yeah. Guys, men and women, same thing, same, same life length for our purposes. Men and women have the same amount of DNA. They have same, same everything. The only thing that changes is this chromosome at the end. Men get one chromosome from their dad, which is the Y chromosome, and one chromosome from their mom, which is the X chromosome. All right. Now, that's all for the lesson for today. If you want, we can start solving one uh, question in here, which is from the exit ticket. We're going to solve a different version of that exit ticket question so we have some answers when we get to them and i'm gonna call someone in the chat all right let's see all right so let's change of topic so chromosomes are very fun i encourage you to go look about uh search about chromosomes learn as, as much as you can about chromosomes but we're gonna switch to pedigree trees right now um what if someone gets an extra chromosome by accident? That's a disease. So karyotypes, these type of images, and I'm just gonna, this is the last thing I'm gonna say today about that. Uh, usually doctors, when your mom is pregnant or when someone is pregnant, the doctor asks, do you need a karyotype? Do you need to? Do you need me to take a karyotype uh, when you're pregnant? That's because they wanna see if something is wrong with the chromosomes. They look at the chromosomes and there is something out of place, then they can see, they can test for diseases or different sicknesses. Uh, but yes, if there is an extra chromosome or anything else wrong with chromosomes, that means that uh, the baby has a disease and then the doctor talks to the mom and they, they try to solve it. Obviously, they're doctors. All right. So let's go to the pedigree before we go. Uh, it's in here. All right. So let's see here. So I'm going to ask you and I'm going to take a screenshot just before we go. Take a look at the parents number two five and number two six so in the exit ticket you're gonna see a lot of numbers a lot of take a look at the parent that is called number two six two five two whatever but i'm gonna ask you right now to take a look at the parents which are called uh two oh. again with this one guys sorry about that so two five and the parent two six 
Now, how do we know that parent is called 2, 5, or 2, 6? Here's how we're going to do it. I guess in here. Here's how we do it. So we look at the generation. The first letters are the generation. So first generation is 1, or I. Second generation is 2, or 2 I's. Third generation is 3, or 3 I's. And fourth generation is IV or number four. These are called Roman numbers. For those of you who don't know, this is how Romans, you know, you have learned from the Roman Empire. They used to write like that. A lot of people still use it, especially if you are the, watch the Super Bowl, right? Uh, they usually put the Roman numbers. I think they still do it. Uh, so we're going to look at parent number two. So parent number two, five is in the second generation. That means it's probably the grandparents. And number five is the number of the kid. So parent number five is here. 2-5 is the grandmother, and parent 2-6 is the person who she married, which is the grandfather of this, uh, well, I guess in this case, is the parent of these two kids. All right, uh, it's AA when they make a, okay, Nevea, <laughs> Nevea, can you unmute yourself because you just gave us the answer. Uh, Nevea, so the question I was going to ask is, what do you think is the genotype for these two parents since the kid has a recessive allele? And then in a, letter, a lowercase a, and then when they made um when they made a three five, they both mm -hmm. gave, they both gave him or her two little lowercase a, so that made her or he get the disease. And then for three six, we don't know the second generation second letter but we know that it would be a capital a but we don't know the second letter yep that's absolutely right so if you look at his parents the reason that Vea, and thank you so much the reason that Vea found out that these parents were heterozygous is because the kid has two recessive alleles and i know you're gonna go uh to ela in two minutes but let me just show you why so this kid since he has two recessive alleles we know that the parents have at least one recessive allele and the reason we know they're heterozygous is because they do not have the disease or the condition. What are we looking at here? They don't have the conditions. They're in here clear, white. So we know the first allele has to be dominant. Now, Nevea also told us that in here, the second kid, since it has a dominant phenotype, it probably received either at least one dominant allele. So it received definitely one dominant allele and the second allele could be either little a, or also it could be a homozygous dominant parent. All right, so let me just show you in here. It probably either received two of the dominant or one dominant, one recessive. 